We have leaked images and additional leaked specs for the Sony ZV-E1, a high-end vlogging camera that's due to be announced tomorrow. But what's got many people concerned is, well, the reports of overheating from some testers. And these testers say the camera overheats an awful lot, while other testers are saying that, well, the camera hasn't overheated for them at all. So why the discrepancy? Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that great stuff. It's greatly appreciated, and it means an awful lot to me, but it really helps this channel grow. Last week, Sony Alpha Rumors provided us with a comprehensive set of leaked capabilities for the Sony ZV-E1. Here's what you need to know. The Sony ZV-E1 is a high-end vlogging camera. It's going to have the exact same capabilities as the Sony A7S III, a camera that sells for about $34.98. And it's going to have the exact same sensor as a Sony A7S III. So 4K video, 24, 25, 30 frames per second, 50 and 60 frames per second, as well as 100 and 120 frames per second. Full sensor readout with a 12 megapixel full frame sensor without any signs of overheating. At least that's what the A7S III and the FX3 are capable of. And the FX3 is a video centric version of the A7S III. And this vlogging camera, the ZV-E1, is a video centric vlogging version of the A7S III and the FX3. It's gonna have the exact same autofocus system as a recently announced and released Sony A7R5, the one that has its own dedicated AI chip. So will this camera have its own dedicated AI chip? Well, we'll have to wait until tomorrow to find out. In terms of ISO range, between probably around 100 up to 409,000, but the one thing that caught us attention by these first leaked detail leak specifications that Sony Alpha Rumors posted was this line right here. The body overheats a lot at the moment. That's really kind of annoying because it just leaves us there with a big Debbie Downer fish. There's no mention in any way whatsoever what scenarios the person was shooting in, what climates they were shooting in, or even, well, what use cases. And even then, we don't even know what version it is. Is it an early development model or not? Is it a production model? And I wouldn't get too concerned about this yet because, well, it's rather limited in the information that we have. And I've got another source we're gonna talk about shortly that has something, well, different to say about that. But in terms of pricing, this is where the ZV-E1 differs greatly from the ZV-E10, the ZV-1, and the unmentionable ZV-1F, which while sells for around $498, uh, is just an absolute terrible camera. Do not even consider this if it goes on sale for $200 because with a contrast detect depth from defocus autofocus system, it's gonna drive you absolutely insane. Now let's take a look at the second set of specifications. And the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the reference to overheating. The tester said, I personally didn't have any overheating issues with the unit I used. Again, this is very irritating. Well, what use cases were you shooting in? What climate were you shooting in? Were you shooting in Calgary, Alberta with minus 20 degrees Celsius? Because yeah, I wouldn't expect any camera, even the early R5 to overheat in those situations. We don't know the development version. We don't know anything about the scenario or use cases. And that's why I find these two reports to be suspect. We just don't have enough information. But tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is Toronto or New York time, we're gonna have an announcement. Sony's already scheduled it. You can see it in YouTube. And they're gonna announce a new vlogging camera and it is going to be the ZV-E1. So at that point, we're gonna know for sure. We're gonna see a whole bunch of reviews out. And I bet you anything, we're gonna get something from Gordon Lang, most likely DP Review and a few others. So then we'll know for sure if this camera overheated, in what scenarios, and of course, what use cases. Other specifications that the ZV-E1 is supposed to have, according to the second tester, it's gonna have a new cinematic mode, one that I think, according to the specifications here, indicates that it's gonna provide black bars. But then again, if you strap on an anamorphic lens, you're gonna get those as well. And I really recommend going with the hardware and doing everything while you're shooting instead of fixing it in post. Other new modes, we get a dynamic stabilization mode. The source also confirms that we're gonna have the exact same autofocus system found in the Sony A7R5. But once again, they don't claim or they don't specify whether it's gonna have that AI chip, which to me is part of the capabilities of that new autofocus system. One other thing that the ZV-E1 will have, it'll have a quick touch button for zooming in at two times or 1.5 times. So it is seeming like a rather interesting camera. Now the question I have for you is, is this new camera, this new vlogging camera, the ZV-E1, is it a high-end camera that would be, well, something you would consider for your workflow? Is this something that would interest you? It's got definitely a smaller body, not much bigger than the ZV-E10. And with the FX30 and the FX3 on the market, 
to me, I think this is a tough sell. I personally would choose the FX30. At $1,798, it's an APS-C version of the Sony A7S III and the FX3, and to me, it's got a really good set of capabilities. So if I was doing corporate events, if I was doing a YouTube channel in uh, where I had plenty of space and the right lens, then yeah, I would use that. Otherwise, I'd consider using the FX3. I, at this point, until I see the reviews and the final specifications, I'm not really sure where this Sony high-end vlogging camera, the ZV-E1, fits in. I'm really curious about that. But what I'm gonna do is tomorrow morning at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time, one hour before Sony's announcement, I'm gonna be broadcasting live. I'm gonna cover all the information and we're gonna start off by looking at the latest leaked images as well as the leaked specifications. We're gonna talk about that with a couple of guests I've got. Stop the FOMO, he shoots with all Sony cameras. Sony cameras are essential on his channel. He's got the FX3, the FX30, the A7 IV and the Alpha One. And he's gonna tell us what he thinks of this camera, whether it makes sense for his workflow. And we also have James Jackson Films on. He's gonna talk about his viewpoints from that of a cinematic view. He shoots with cinema cameras and it's gonna have a slightly different viewpoint. He shoots with the Sony, not the Sony, the Canon C70 and the R5C. So that tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and then at 10 o'clock, we're gonna cover the announcement live and then we're gonna cover off post and sort of do a bit of a post game analysis. And during that live stream, I'm gonna give away an Angelbird SD card, AV30 SD card, one of their latest cards. So join me tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And if you wanna stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, who knows, we might get more information later tonight on the Sony ZV-E1. Go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. And by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, well, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on all the latest, <laughs> latest, on all the latest camera news and rumors. But please check your junk and spam folder because a lot of times these messages come in there and you'll miss all the announcements. But thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.